Next up is Tarzan. The Ape Man first appeared in a novel by Edgar Rice Burroughs, but was later introduced into the comics page by artist Hal Foster, who was a ridiculously talented artist, and I will be talking more about him in just a bit. The character of Tarzan, it's based on the feral child archetype. Now, the feral child archetype is basically, it's a person who is raised without human contact, often raised by animals. Uh, this is a very old archetype. It goes back to ancient mythologies. Uh, the oldest one that I know of off the top of my head is the Roman myth of Romulus and Remus, where they were said to be uh, suckled by a she-wolf. Uh, they are the legendary founders of Rome. So it's a very old concept. I'm sure there are even older uh, examples of this idea. But the point is that Tarzan is such a popular character. He be, you know, became such a popular character. And I imagine even if you've never... Uh, you know, read any Tarzan comics, or I imagine if any of you guys have probably seen anything, you've probably seen the Disney cartoon, which is, it was actually pretty good. Uh, but you, you know the basic story, you know, Tarzan raised by apes. Uh, I think a lot of people know that even if they've never seen any Tarzan anything, it's just kind of part of our language. Uh, so Tarzan is so popular that now if I wanted to, like I was creating a character who was raised by animals, no matter what kind of animal it was, uh, I imagine a lot of people would be like, oh, it's like Tarzan, right? So Tarzan is almost synonymous now with feral child, uh, and more people would probably say that. Much like how William Shakespeare was not the first person to ever tell a story of two young lovers who are brought together, uh, but fate has it out for them, and they wind up dead at the end. Uh, by no means did he invent that. However, he did refer to them as star-crossed lovers, and Romeo and Juliet was, you know, it's not the oldest version of that story, but it is the most famous. It is the most well-known. So if I were to write a story where one person is on one side, the other is on the other, and they fall in love, but they wind up dead, you know, people would be like, oh, that's that's a, the Romeo and Juliet, or, you know, star-crossed lovers, uh, which is a line from Romeo and Juliet. Same thing with Tarzan. The popularity of this character is essentially renamed uh, the archetype. A little bit more, uh, a little bit more about Hal Foster here, and I think I'll end on this note for today. Uh, Hal Foster, he later went on to create another popular strip uh, by the name of Prince Valiant, and Hal Foster was another one of these artists where they gave him—I don't know if they gave him the whole page, but they gave him most of the whole page to do his artwork. And if you look at this image here, uh, how just uh, what, I mean, just this is just one panel of one of Hal Foster's strips. And the way he centers the hero very heroically in the middle there, and you've got the horse and you've got the cliffs that are framing him. If you look in the background there, you can see some sort of battle, uh, you know, taking place. Obviously, uh, there's the aftermath of some of the battle right there, uh, right below uh, Prince Valiant at his horse's feet. Uh, wonderfully uh, complex, beautiful work that Hal Foster would do. Uh, absolutely gorgeous stuff. And again, you know, a comic strip artist nowadays just would not be able to do this because it would be shrunk down so small that you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't get a very good feeling uh, for it, for, for what it looks like and, and what they're doing. So it's, you know, like I say, you just don't see that kind of thing in the comic strips anymore. Uh, it's it's kind of it's a thing of the past. Uh, comic books can maybe do that occasionally get oversized comic books, so it's not completely dead. But as far as something that you can look forward to coming to your house uh, every week, because he did he just did Sunday strips. You know, you just you just don't see that anymore. And even like by the time I was a kid, they were still doing Prince Valiant strips. But Hal Foster, uh, he was not doing it anymore. I believe he had passed on, and, and it wasn't anywhere near as good as as what he was doing. Uh, but let me uh, just go off on a, one of my many tangents here. Uh, the thing is with Prince Valiant, uh, I have a bit of a personal connection with Prince Valiant. Uh, Prince Valiant is my was my mother's favorite comic strip. And growing up, when I was reading comics, I would show her various issues of Spider Man and you know things like that. And I would show her, and, I, and there were various artists that I liked. I'd be like, oh, doesn't this look good? Doesn't this look cool? And, you know, she was often very appreciative of it. But she would frequently say, you know, oh, it's no Hal Foster. Because she just absolutely loved Hal Foster. She talked about the, the, you know, how detailed his work was. And fairly recently, I bought some reprints of Prince Valiant strips. 
and they print them up on nice oversized books. And I got a chance to read some of those old strips. Now, don't get me wrong. They're, they're, they're kind of hokey. Uh, they're kind of cheesy. They're gorgeous to look at. But the stories are are very, very over dramatic. You know, he, he has to leave this woman that he loves behind and he's pining for her. And it, like I said, it's got a certain hokiness to it, but but it's it's still good. It, it has its charms. It, it is what it is, but it's very much a, a, a type of storytelling of the past. But the cool thing about it was, is while I was reading it, you know, I realized, you know, th thinking about the fact that uh, this was my mom's favorite strip. And when I talked to her on the phone about it, and, and there was one story in particular that I talk to my mom and I said, yeah, I, really, I like this one story. I like this one thing that happened. And my mom instantly knew what I was talking about. Uh, she had remembered it. It was one of her favorite stories. And th this is the wonderful thing about art in general, not just comic books, but art. And that is we can understand each other better when we understand the art that other people like and why they like it. And if I think of my mother, um, who may wind up watching this, uh, when she tells me stories of uh, growing up, she grew up in post-World War II Germany. She was only two years old uh, when Germany surrendered at the end of World War II. And she led, led a pretty difficult life. Uh, big family, um, small house, uh, just a very difficult situation. They were uh, my grandfather, and I don't want to go too into this right now, <laughs> save this for some other lecture, I guess. Uh, my grandfather, he was captured by the Allies, and he did, I believe, three years in prison. And so my, my mom had a, a pretty tough life. And when I read these stories, I, I get it, because this, this was her escape from what she grew up with. This was uh, you know, the, the, the romance, the adventure, these beautiful images, uh, much as the things that we like and we love, whether it's music or movies or comic books or, you know, or whatever, it's our escape from our daily troubles. And this stuff is, like I said, it's by our standards now, it's a bit on the hokey side, but it is, it is beautiful to look at. It is very much not real life which is what people want and what people uh, often can't get enough of. And so reading this, I felt like I wasn't just knowing something about Hal Foster, who created it, but I know my mom a little bit better. Anyway, that's all for, the, for now. Uh, I will continue on in another video.